Hey guys, this is Robert with the Recreational Woodworker. Today I'm going to show you how to install barn door hardware onto this double dog kennel. Our normal plans are for doing hinge doors and I have modified this design slightly to allow for the barn door hardware. Essentially what I do is I make this top rail and this bottom rail twice as wide. So normally we use two and a half inch rails and styles. I went and made these five inches just to give me enough room for all the hardware I get. There's gonna be links in the description to the barn door hardware we use, as well as a corresponding blog post. And of course you can buy the plans to build this dog kennel and several, several other models on our website, recreationalwoodworker.com. So we have our hardware, we have almost everything we need, but what I found is I had to do a few modifications to get this to work and I have to do a few more things to the skin before I can install the hardware. When you size the doors for the barn door hardware, I make my doors one inch bigger and one inch taller than the opening and the doors will slide this way out of the way and they come here and then connect with a little hook to keep it latched. So you can see I've done a little bit of modification to this door as well. I've added this three quarter inch wide or three quarter inch thick two inch wide spacer block. This holds my barn door hardware out where it needs to be because I use the barn door hardware I use is designed for one and a half inch doors. And these doors are normally only three quarters of an inch. So this gets us the thickness that we need, creates a little offset. And so that's the modification I make there. Um, the barn door hardware I use is from Amazon and it's inexpensive, great quality and it's kind of what we use for everything unless it's like a special custom order. And then you can get different brackets, extra parts, um, really can do the whole barn door hardware set for about 150 ish dollars in hardware. Now I need to add a thicknesser to our barn door frame. So I'm going to set up the table saw and show you how I do that. Here's a disclaimer for you, okay? What I'm about to show you is what I would call an advanced table saw technique. If you don't have a high quality table saw, if you are inexperienced with the table saw, if this is your first woodworking project, you can go buy the material, the thickness you need and stay safe. Um, in fact, I don't recommend this technique at all. You should never ever do it ever. And that's my legal disclaimer. So this is what I'm calling a more advanced technique because we're going to take this three quarter inch material and we're going to, rip it into two, what is that, five sixteenths thick boards. So right now I've got a nice straight board. This does have some knots in it, but I'm gonna avoid the knots by using this material right here. Now I'm gonna set up my table saw to rip this board in half. I'm allowing for my curve, so it's three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna use, lose an eighth of an inch. So that means I only really have five eighths of an inch to work with. So I'm going to set my fence at 5 sixteenths and this is going to have to be exactly perfect. If you can find some 3 eighths material at your store or some quarter inch material at your store, that's probably the way to do it. Okay. So I've got my teeth where they're barely coming out the top. Now the most important part of this for safety, everything is a feather board. I use this mag switch feather board. Um, it's fantastic. It's a little pricey, but good tools are worth the money definitely recommend it. There is going to be a link for this below in the description. It's going to be an affiliate link. So do that. Again, none of my stuff is sponsored. Well, maybe one day it is, but none of the stuff here is sponsored. I bought all this stuff with my own money. So that holds you nice and tight right there. So we have our board. We're ready to start running it through. Have our feather board, our fence locked down. If you're doing something really tall, you can install a sacrificial fence. We're ready to cut. So I'm going to turn on my dust bucket. Mm -hmm. And that is our cut. And now we have two approximately five sixteenths boards. If I was going for perfect thicknessing. I'd run these both through the planer next to get them down to the proper thickness, probably with quarter inch. Got my trim board sanded and stained. Just need to let these dry for a little bit and then we can put them on. 
All right, guys, so I've got my strip stain. It's in place. I'm getting it flush with this bottom edge of the rail. I've got a couple of clamps over here holding it in place for me. Now I'm just going to take my nail gun. I'm just going to tack this in place. All right, so that is the top spacer. Uh, the header, we're gonna call this the header for the trap. I install headers even when I'm doing uh, barn doors at people's homes. So it's basically the same philosophy. I'm gonna install the header and that's what my track is gonna to mount to. So here's what we've got. We've got our door laid out, how it needs to be, our hardware. Um, sometimes it comes pre-assembled. Sometimes you have to put the bearing roller on. That's very self-explanatory. So now we need to put it on. It comes with these bolts. These bolts come with what I call an acorn nut. Most of the time I can't get it tight enough before it bottoms out. So they also supply you just a regular hex nut. There's two washers. So we're gonna put it through like that and the washer's gonna go on the back. So it goes on our front. That's gonna go through and then we're just gonna put the washer and nut on the back. So I'm gonna get this one in, same thing. Washer on the bottom and my hex nut on the bottom. And then I just have a wrench and a socket. And then I'm just gonna make sure this is straight. And I overdo my holes a little bit, so I see that play right there. That play allows me to adjust it a little bit if I need to. So I have a little bit of up, down, left, right that I can do. So I'm just gonna kinda get it what looks even, hold it in place with my thumb. And we don't need to go crazy tight with this. We just need it nice and snug, okay? A lot of people think you gotta get it as tight as humanly possible. You just need it nice and snug. All right, so that's one. Now we're just gonna do the other one. Same exact thing. If there's one overarching lesson to woodworking that I would like to share with you, that's the rule of build a jig. I created a, just scrap plywood. It's as wide as my header. I laid out where my hardware is going to go. All my screw holes are a lot easier to lay out on the table than trying to hold the track up here, okay? And if you think about it, every tool, gadget, thing we use in our entire world, ultimately somebody made a jig to fit something and bug them. Um, so all your tools, table saw, somebody figure out, hey, spinning saw blades are great. Let's put them in a hundred different applications to do different things in different ways. Same principle. So take the time in your woodworking, make yourself a jig. You think you're going to throw it away? It'll make your work so much better, make it easier, and ultimately it'll make it faster by laying out these jigs. Okay, so the jig's laid out. I've been marked my drill bit, so I drill this out with a quarter inch drill bit. And just gonna make sure everything's aligned. Thought. This strap comes in two pieces. If you want a one piece strap, then just order a one piece strap. These fit together just one way, so you want to make sure that you lay it out right so they actually go together the way they're supposed to. And then on this one, there's actually a little screw that connects them together. Sometimes on smaller tracks, you actually run a bolt through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to install one at a time. You have your screw, a washer. That's gonna go through this hole right here. And then you have a bushing that goes like that, and that goes against your uh, header. That spaces it out as far as it needs to be spaced. All right, so I have everything set up, and I'm just gonna use my impact driver. I'm gonna take it easy. You can overdrive these things. So now I have the right thing. We're just gonna get that on there. I'm not trying to get it super tight, and I'm just gonna let it sit there for a second. And then I have my next bushing, all that right here. I'm gonna make sure it's not scratching against my work surface. And uh, I'm just gonna come over here, put the bushing in. I pre-drilled all my holes, so once I get that aligned, it'll sort of hold it for me. Right there. And then we'll just drive it home. And again, 
again, these are slightly oversized, so you do get a little play there. And I'll show you that in a second. But now I'm gonna get the other side on, get this aligned. Okay, I have a slight problem. These guys don't align perfectly, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start loosening everything up. I talked about how there's a little bit of play in all of this. That should do just exactly what I need to do, where I can get that together. There we go. I've got that pressed together. Now I'm gonna screw this part together. Okay, so this is simple enough. It's just a little screw. There's a washer, and then there's a nut that goes on from underneath. And that'll press together, hold our tracks nice and together. And now I can tighten up the rest of the hardware and get the track aligned where it needs to be. The screws poke through the other side. I use these little uh, rubber caps. So you screw onto the screw that's protruding. It doesn't protrude far, but you don't want your dog in there where those can, you know, poke them. We're ready to install our doors. The doors will just slide onto the track. Yes, I know it's long and they slide on like that. I space it where you can get it off. There's a little bushing you can put underneath that will keep it from being able to get knocked off. So now we're ready to install our stop. So this is the stop and it just goes on like that. Include a tiny little Allen key. There is a right and a left. I always space these or flip them where the little screws that you tighten up aren't going to be seen. And I'm just going to get it approximately right there. There's a few more things I want to do before I trim my rail. We're now ready to install our bottom guides. I simply take this, install it there, make sure it'll clear. I'm going to slide it out of the way. Make sure it works and you can see it's about just like about an eighth lower than the gap that'll hold it and keep the keep everything in line right there all right so that's one Daddy? that's gonna hold right there Yes, buddy? What's up? I cut it off. You cut it off? Cool. Look. Let my little boy use hand saws, and this is what he just did. Show them the saw you're using. Go ahead the saw you're using so they can see. Yep. We're just using uh, this little Irwin pull saw. Super safe. Like, I mean, yeah, there's always the risk that, yeah, you can cut yourself if you're not careful, but there's nothing that he's going to do with this that's going to cause any permanent damage. And it's a great little inexpensive saw to use. So that's the saw that I let him use in the shop. There, and that is our bottom brackets that hold everything in place. Looks like I'm good and centered. Now, now it's time to install our hooks. I just use a simple eye hook to do this with, and it's pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, I now put the hook on the door itself, the eye on the, the rail, and that just that way the hook is just completely out of the way whenever it's open. I have my door. I come, I look at my door, my door is 20. Five and a half inches tall, half of 25 is 24 and a half, half of a half is a quarter, so my, my halfway point is 12 and three quarters. So now I'm going to just come down, set this guy in a safe spot. 25 and a half, 12 and three quarters, so right there is my halfway point. Whoops. And so I'm just gonna take this. If my tape will stay hung. Right there. 
All right, just created a little dent with my point of the screw. Just again, just marked it. And then I'm just going to take a, um, what is it? I think it's 764 drill bit. I'm just drill my pilot hole there. And then I'm just going to work this in. Now we're ready to take our hook, put there. And now I have some adjustment here. And it looks like I'm actually gonna move that over a little bit once I get it in. You notice I'm going into the side with my hook. I'm just gonna eyeball that level. And again, I'm just gonna press that in. And this I actually need to drill at an angle because I'm really close to the surface. So I'm just gonna drill that at an angle. Going into my board. That looks good. So now we're just going to thread this into place. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now you have that right there. I'm just going to move this stop over a little bit. I mean, I don't want this so tight it can't open, but this being taunt will help keep everything a little bit more secure. Right there, and then, uh oh, tighten that down right there. Okay, and that holds it nice and snug in place. Now it's time to do the other side, and then our last step is trimming this excess rail. All right, guys, we are almost done. I've got my hooks, I've got everything installed. Now it's just time to trim the extra bar here. So what I'm doing is I've got my sawzall, I've got it set up, and I'm just gonna come on this blue tape line that I made, and I'm just gonna cut straight down. That side one, now we're gonna do the second side and then I'm gonna come back with a sander and take those sharp edges off. Okay, everything's cut. Now we are just going to sand off these sharp edges. And all the sharp edges are gone. All right, guys, so here you are. Barn door closes, stop, stop, latches, and we're all done. So this is how we install the barn door hardware on our dog kennels. When I install barn doors in people's homes, it's pretty much the same process, just a little bit different um, layout and things, and most of the time you're up on a ladder. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, ring the bell. If you disliked it, dislike it. Just interact with this in some way. Comments are great. You can go to the recreationalwoodworker.com and learn more about what it is I do, who I am, and the stuff that we make and the stuff that we sell. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.